Welcome to VTU e Sectiona e Learning Center. Uh, in this video, we are going to see about the continuation of module number three of artificial neural network. In the yesterday's class, we have come across about the Euler's log Lagrange equations. To find the approximating function f that maximizes the Lagrange equation, so we need to calculate the functional derivatives of this particular value. So, which is going to be done by the differentials and we need to set it to 0 much in the spirit of the extremization procedure for the simple function. So, the fracket differential of R is defined as yesterday we come across in this particular video where dr of f of g is equal is similar to that of d by d gamma of f r f plus gamma g with respect to gamma is equal to 0. So, we have got the particular expression from that equation. So, a series of algebraic steps uh, which yields the Euler Lagrange equation for this particular functional which have been dealt as this particular expression which is going to be dealt like this. This is going to be called as the Euler Lagrange equation for the particular function r of f. So, such a way we are going to continue this particular session. So, in today's session we are going to see about how to solve the Euler's Lagrange system. The solution of this Euler's Lagrange system requires the use of the Green's function for the linear differential operator q which is going to be taken in particular terminology which appears on the left hand side of the equation. So, the Green's function which is going to be g of x comma y, we are going to consider that g of x comma y. So, for a linear differential operator q, we are going to consider the Green's function as g of x comma y which is going to satisfy the prescribed boundary conditions and has continuous partial differentiatives with respect to x. Everywhere, if you are going to see about this x is equal to x i where there is a singularity which is going to be importantly it satisfies the partial differential equation. Hence, we are going to consider this x is equal to x i. So, the general equation if you are going to see about that which satisfies the differential equation which is going to be q into g of x comma y is equal to 0 such a way it is going to satisfy the condition. So, everywhere except at the input x is equal to y and another way of saying this is to use the del function to rewrite the equation which is going to be rewritten as the particular terminology of q of g of x comma y is equal to del of x comma y. So, since there is a singularity at x is equal to y, uh, note that the differential operator q is going to be a self adjoint since q is equal to q bar. So, which implies that the Green's function is going to be symmetric. So, g of x comma y is equal to g of y comma x. Such a way the important property of this Green's function is that it plays a role of an inverse uh, of the differential operator q. <coughs> In other words, we can say a system of the differential equation q of x, q of x is equal to h of x which admits the solution where we can finally in the position of set the solution to the regularization problem. Note that if we denote q is equal to p dash of p dash p which yields the final solution. So, what the final solution is going to be which is going to yield the final solution as f dash of x is equal to 1 over lambda summation of i is equal to 1 to q and which is going to consisting of this particular data which is going to yield the final expression as like this g of x comma x i where the w i the weight matrix is going to be considered as this particular terminology the first term of this particular the first term of this particular equation. <coughs> so, this equation is a linear weighted sum of q Green's function centered at the data point x i. So, with the coefficients of w i which are given by the ratio of the linear error and the regularization 
parameter. What does f this equation means? So, we, we will have a uh, doubt over there. What does this equation means? Since the solution is going to be a linear weighted sum of q's Green's function, it means that they form a basis of other function in the space, which is therefore q dimensionals in which the solution of the regularization problem which is going to be lies. To sum up, the regularization solutions use a q's green functions in a weighted summations, where the nature of the chosen green's function depends upon the kind of different operator of the value p, different operator of the value p. Okay. So, which is going to be chosen for the regularization term which we have been defined already as capital R suffix small r which is going to be the uh, regularization solution proposed for this particular value key. Uh, so, that the linear weighted sum of q green function centered at the data point always it is going to be present at x i. Okay. So, let me see about the solutions for the weights how it is going to be get provided that one. We have not completed the solution by problem yet, the weights still have to determine. So, that to solve for this weights, we evaluate the equation, the above previous equation at each of the data points in that time, which yields a set of q functions, which is going to yield a set of q functions. So, thus the regularization solution, which uses a q green function in a weighted summation. The nature of this chosen Green's function depends on the kind of differential operator P which chosen for the regularization term which is going to be presented R. So, for that which is going to provide the solving for weights. So, as we are going to solving for this weights as a starting point we are going to take that one f dash of f of f, uh, f, f dash of x is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to q where we are going to have the weights with the g of x comma x i. So, evaluate the equation at the each data point while we are going to evaluate this equation at the each data points in the time t we are going to get that f dash of x k is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to q with the weights. So, here we are going to term the value k is equal to 1 to q. So, this value we can minimize that the w i the weight matrix is equal to the same functionality where we are going to take this value k is equal to 1 to q. Such a way we are going to provide the solution for the particular weights. So, solving the weights with the help of this particular starting points of all different data points we are going to evaluate that and we are going to get the solution we are going to arrive the solution at this particular point. Move on to this continuation of this solution in order to provide or in order to facilitate the conversation of this system into a vector matrix form. So, the definition which we have been given over there is nothing but some of which have already been introduced, but we are going to repeat for our convenience and in order which is going to be taken that to introduce a matrix notation. To introduce this matrix notation we are going to have that f dash is equal to f dash x of 1 etcetera up to f dash x, x q with transfers. So, we are going to take this particular value of this weight matrix in the terminology of weight 1 to weight q transfers and d is going to be taken d 1 into d q transfers. So, that we are going to get the matrix. The uh, uh, matrix notation g is equal to g of x comma g of x1 comma x1 to g of x1 comma x cube x2 like that we are going to go ahead and we are going to get the particular matrix like this. So, this is a uh, matrix notation which is going to be given for to provide the solutions for the weights in this particular parameter. So, let me introduce about how this values exactly it is going to be fixed over there. So, G is going to be referred to as the green matrix, which is a symmetric matrix since the green's function is going to be symmetric when we are going to see about the equation, we are going to take this equation, it is going to be a symmetric one. Hence, we are going to take that G is equal to G transfers. So, with this definitions, recasting that particular green matrix into a 
normal matrix into a green matrix definition, we are going to get the value weight matrix is equal to and the function is going to be defined like this and we are going to get the d value is equal to g plus uh, lambda i into its weights. So, that where it can be followed that g plus lambda i inverse of d is equal to weight matrix. So, this is going to be the solution which have been provided over there from this particular solving the weights. Here the i being the q cross q identity, identity matrix. So, the linear system of this particular expression, but the linear system of this particular expression which is going to be deals about the particular function which is going to be provided at this particular value as w is equal to g plus lambda i inverse of d. So, uh, the linear system will have a unique solution which is going to be provided the matrix of g plus lambda i is going to be inevitable, inevitable. Okay. So, note that the g plus gamma i plays the role of an important matrix and therefore, we have invoked the Michaeli theorem. So, again which states the g will be positive definitions for a certain classes of green functions. So, it is going to be a Gaussian's multiple, uh, multi quadrature or inverse multi quadrature which is going to provide the data points in a pair distinct. So, that what happened with this idea in place the solution is to be provided for the system which is going to be taken as w is equal to g plus lambda i inverse of d. Such a way we are going to propose the solution for this particular problem. Move on to this Edeclean norm dependency. So, it is nothing but multi vibrate Gaussian is going to be a green function. So, recall that it was mentioned earlier that the nature of the Green's function depends on the kind of differential operator P, which is going to be chosen for the regularization term already we have mentioned about that we are going to take the term P for the regularity activity R. So, that we know now it is going to be if the operator P is going to be both rationally invariant and translationally invariant then the Green's function g of x comma y depends only on the edulian norm of the difference of this vector x and y. Hence, we are going to find the edulian norm dependency. So, if as I said if the differential operator p is going to be rationally invariant or translationally invariant then the Green's function g of x comma y depends only on the edulian norm of this particular difference of this vector. Hence, the value g of x comma y is equal to g of x minus y modulus of x minus y. Thus, the regularization solution takes the form as f of uh, f dash of x is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to q with the mate matrix of this particular g value which have been terminated which have been replaced substituted as g of x minus x i. Such a way we are going to create the particular solution into this expression. So, coming move on to this multivariate Gaussian is going to be Green's function. So, as we are aware about that which is a normally uh, linear combination of the radial bias function. So, the familiar Gaussian function can be defined as g of x comma y is equal to exponential of the term is an example of a Green's function which is defined by the self adjoint differential operator, self adjoint differential operator. Okay. So, that if the final maximizer is going to be we can replace or we can uh, fine tune that one and we can get f of x is equal to this expression as going to be the final minimizer. So, therefore, the final minimizer is going to be providing such result it is going to be a green function defined by the self adjoint differential operator. So, the result is similar to that of the radial function which is going to be interpolation network, but now with a major uh, but substitute difference or substitute difference we are performing an interpolation where the weight as defined are now derived from the regularization solution. So, note that uh, there are other functions that could be used as stabilizers there are numerous reasons why the Gaussian class is going to be popular. So, I am going to provide some of the solutions for this how this is going to be get provide a yeah, solution 
for this particular thing. So, first one the solution to the regularization equation is going to be incomplete because all functions that lie in the null space of the differential operator P and P does not or do not uh, contribute anything to this particular regularization value R and as an appointed or a pointed out in this function which are going to be invisible to the smoothening term the parameter which have been taken over there as the lambda of P of F square which is going to be present in the regularization value. So, the complete solution which requires the addition of the term that is going to be a problem dependent. So, this additional null space term is not needed if the green function is going to be Gaussian. So, the Gaussian shows better smoothening property than other radial stabilizers and the geometry of this n dimensional Gaussian function is going to be well understood. So, such a way what happened we are going to provide the solution to this regularization equation which is going to be provided for this particular expression such a way we are going to deal this expression q is equal to p dash p is equal to summation of this notations are going to be get present over there understand. So, coming to the next topic and MATLAB code segment for this RBNF regularization interpolation. So, before entering into this particular thing just I am going to give a brief thing that comparison regularized and non regularized interpolations to noise data. So, we have to compare this regularized and non regularized interpolations to the noisy data. Consider again the problem of interpolating a function which is going to be described by a 10 noisy data points already we have discussed in the previous video. As before the data points are equally spaced with a small or a sample of this interval which is going to be identified the interval minus uh, 2 pi to plus 2 pi and are generated by adding a noise to the function function of f of x is equal to 2 sin x plus x as we are aware about that function we have taken function f of x is equal to 2 sin of x plus x that value we have been taken over there we assume that value. So, the 10 bias function with a spread set of 0.6 the spread set is going to be taken as lambda is equal to 0 0.6 the, uh, the spread set is going to be taken as a 0 0.6 value which are used to generate the interpolating function. So, the only difference with the MATLAB code which is going to be proposed here is going to be introduced a regularization solution and considering the lambda value is going to be 0 0.5. Okay. So, as I mentioned over there the lambda value is going to be 0 0.5 over here. So, this is going to be the code segment for the regularized interpolation. So, the lambda is going to be set as 0 0.5 and we are going to take for i is equal to 1 is 1 is to q for j is equal to 1 is to q and we are going to calculate the pi value as already what we have did over there pi of i comma j is equal to exponential of the term and we are going to take the regularization weights the weight regularization is going to be taken as inverse of pi plus lambda value and for every k is equal to 1 is to set test of points we are going to take over there. So, pi test is going to be pensioned over there and we are going to have the particular thing. Notice that the pi test the pi and the pi test matrix are calculated as before. And the only change is in the calculation of the weights which is going to be present for this W regularization weight, regular, weight regularization W is going to be taken over there where a value of lambda is going to be added to all the diagonal elements of the pi prior to performing the inversion and the multiplying into the target vector D. Okay, the target vector d which have been shown over there in this particular diagram. So, the two cases which have been shown over there for the interpolation notice that by setting the lambda is equal to 0 and the weight solutions reverts to the original unregularized, unregularized exact interpolation equation. So, the figure b which is going to be shown over there the figure b which is going to be shown over there which consisting of a clearly interpolation which is going to be exact. Let me discuss about this particular data. This figure shows the interpolation is going to be exact and the interpolation function is going to be non-smooth. 
Understood or not? In the uh, previous video, we have come across about the smoothness. So, in this particular figure, if you are going to see about the figure B, the value of lambda is equal to 0.5. The value of the lambda is going to be taken as 0.5, which gives the weightage to the smoothness of the function while creating of the accuracy of the interpolation. So, the area under the square, the area under the square of this derivative functions for both of this are going to be shown in the next diagram. As already we have come across about that, the smoothness function has been shown over here. So, notice that the large area, the large area which is going to be present in this particular figure which is implying non-smooth behavior and considerably smaller area in this particular figure which implying more smooth behavior. In this trade off between the smoothness and accuracy, note that the interpolation of this regularized function is going to be no longer exact. Such a way we are going to get this non-regularized interpolation and regularized interpolation which is going to be present the difference between both has been specified over there. Let me discuss about a generalized radial bias function network. So, since we are, tra we are training the data and which are going to be usually uh, corrupted by noise. So, we know uh, that the regularization approach can help to overcome this problem. However, uh, you might have noticed that the regularization network which have been described in the previous slide, one bias function for each data point. As we noted earlier that it is absolutely impractical, especially when one considers that with a real world data, which is going to set that often have thousands of training data points. So, the size of the matrix to be inverted would be prohibitively large. So, that the only way to solve this problem is to choose the number of bias functions considerably less than that of the number of data points. So, as already we have come across over there in the context of uh, radial bias function network approximator. So, however, there where we did not consider the regularization and in this context we are now proceed to generalize the RBF. So, radial basic functions networks in two steps, we are going to provide in two steps. One is nothing but reduce the number of basic functions use non data centers. Okay, with the use of non data centers and one more is going nothing but use a weighted norm, use a weighted norm. These are the two uh, generalized test steps we are going to provide or we are going to propose with this particular process. Let me see this one by one in the next slide. So, uh, let me see about this reduced the number of bias functions using non data centrics. Once again, instead of using a strict interpolation of uh, interpolation of this form, one can consider a reduced number of bias functions as Q and capital Q. Now, with the different centers Q uh, mu i no longer assumed to be a centered around the data points and which is going to be having a spread data which is going to be dealt as the A value which is going to be dealt as a A value. Okay. So, both of which are determined using a, a learning or hysterious approach outlined in the particular value. Thus, the approximating function is going to be dealt as f of f suffix a of x is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to q with this particular weight value which is going to be having a particular value which is going to be the centers have been included in that one. So, where the subscript in this is going to be used to distinguish this case for the earlier one. As before, we are interested in minimizing the regularization risk. So, that the regularization risk also going to be get taken into consideration and we are going to take the regularization risk is going to be a function of the particular terminology which is going to be defined over there. So, considering the first term of this equation we are going to rewrite it into a more compact form as we find it convenient to define the vector and matrices. So, the vector and matrices by using the matrix substitutions, we are going to get the matrix as G is equal to this matrix 
and with the help of d is equal d and w weight matrix we are going to yield the particular equation. This definition permits the first term of the previous equation as rewritten as this particular value which is going to be given over here. Understand? So, use this properties of this adjoint of the differential operator and Green's function, we are going to get the term as the particular terminology which is going to be deal like this, where the g is equal to the same matrix have been taken over the g is going to be replaced with the mu value instead of x value. So, with this algebraic simplification in place, the risk functionals can be rewritten as finally, we are going to get the value as this particular expression. So, it deals about the entire final data which is going to be concluded with this one. So, the first aspect of uh, generalizing the radial bias function network has been achieved. So, the number of bias functions has been reduced from q to some small number small q and we have a well defined procedure to determine this weight matrix or weights of the networks under this circumstance. Such a way we are going to reduce the value and we are going to take the final expression of r uh, regularization risk of f of a is equal to d minus g w transverse d minus g w plus lambda weight transfers g inverse of weight matrix. Such a way we are going to take that one into the algebraic simplification in the place with the risk functional of this particular regularization parameter. Let me discuss about how using a weighted norm, the second method or the second thing. So, using a weighted norm. The second aspect of this generalization concerns the nature of the norm that is used the function g of x minus x i, which is going to be suggested in that the standard Edelian norms be replaced by a weight norms, so that we can define that expression as this particular value, which can replace the value with that one. So, x minus mu which is going to be taken into x minus mu of transfers with the particular function which is going to be get specified over here. Here the s is nothing but norm weight matrix of a dimension n cross n. We are going to take that s is nothing but a yeah, norm weight matrix with a value of matrix of d cross sorry n cross n not d cross n it is n cross n. n cross n matrix value are going to be get considered over there. So, if the S is an identity matrix, we recover the standard Edelian norm. So, that going to a step further by substituting this weight norms into a Gaussian function, we have the Gaussian function is going to be termed into exponential of minus x minus mu transpose S transpose S x minus mu and which is going to be replaced with the particular parameters with an k function. So, that we are going to take that one exponential of minus of x minus mu transverse k inverse x minus mu that is going to be the value which is going to be get present over there. So, where this expression is going to be get present for this weighted norms with the help of this second aspect of the generalization concern the weight norms are going to be get present like this, where the k is nothing but the covariance matrix, covariance matrix which is going to be dealt as sigma square i which is a restricted form actually we are not going to use this value just we are going to mention as k such a way we are going to get this particular parameter. Let me see some of the properties which is going to get present over there for the generalized radial bias function network. So, this completes the second aspects of generalization of this radial bias function network. The generalized radial bias network thus as a fewer rather than q bias functions, this is the first property fewer than q bias functions, await norms to compute distance which manifest itself as a general covariant matrix, this is the second property. Third, a bias weight at the output neuron, the bias weight should be always at the output neuron, 
then tunable weights, centers and covariance matrices which has to be get taken into consideration. With this we complete our discussions on the generalized radial basic function network. Okay. Hope that it has been understood by you people with this particular properties we are going to conclude the uh, radial bias function network. Understand? So, let us be continue with the next topic which is going to be called as learning in RBFNs radial bias function networks. We need to learn something from that the learnings have been given over there as random subset selection. So, before going to see about this let's, let me have a brief idea about a learning. A generalized radial bias function network not only use fewer than q bias functions as we are aware about that q being the number of data points, okay, but also permits the centers and spreads of the individual functions to differ from one another. So, we have seen uh, from the above expressions how the weights are determined in the case when the number of bias function is going to be lesser than the number of points and where the spread and centers of those bias functions are no longer restricted to be at the data points. So, we assumed that this were fixed according to some procedure and then proceeded to the final optimal weight on that bias. So, in this particular uh, session or in this particular slide we are going to discuss briefly about some of the methods which is going to be employed to learn the centers and spreads of this bias functions. At the outset uh, I want to mention that fixing the number of bias functions q is equal to capital Q is a matter of experience on the problem one is trying to solve. So, and as such is the based on the historic or uh, heuristic approach uh, we therefore assume in the present treatment that the number of bias function has fixed and that the central problem uh, is one of the determining the centers and or spreads of the individual functions. So, tune to tune the center of this bias functions we are going to adopt some of the approaches which is going to be get employed over there. The first is going to be called as random subset selection random subset selection. This is probably the simplest way to go about determining the centers of the bias function. Out of this q training data points a subset q of them is chosen at random and the centers of the Gaussian bias functions are set to those centers. So, in the semi uh, random selection what happen a basic function is usually placed at every rth data point. So, the spreads are assumed to be function of the maximum distance between the selected or center at mu data at which is going to be collected at the mu data. We define the maximum distance of that particular alpha between any of the chosen centers as alpha is equal to alpha may be a summation of or it may be uh, similarity uh, equal to like we can say that it is a sigma value is going to be a maximum of mu i minus mu j and the Gaussian functions can be defined based on the particular thing. So, here we are going to take about the random subset selection and semi random subset selection. So, as we are going to see about that one as I said the alpha value which is going to be taken into consideration as like that one and the Gaussians are then defined which is going to be get defined the function themselves are going to be defined as like that g of x minus mu i which is going to have the exponential term like this and such that we can take the sigma value as alpha by root 2 q alpha by root 2 q such a way we are going to get this particular expression. Move on to the next procedure hybrid learning procedure hybrid learning procedure. In a hybrid learning procedure which is applied which is applied to this radial bias net function networks one 
uh, first uh, determine the center of the bias function using a clustering algorithm such as k means clustering algorithm etc can be used over there and then tune the hidden uh, to output weights using the LMS procedure. So, as we are going to aware about that one, we have to determine the centers of the bias functions using a clustering algorithm as I mentioned as k means clustering algorithm and we have to tune the hidden to output weights using the LMS procedure. This is going to be the second learning of this particular hybrid learning procedure. Let me see about how the k means clustering algorithm is going to be get works under this particular process. The k means clustering. The k means clustering algorithm is simple to understand and involves the procedure outlined as like in this particular table. So, with the center of this q bias function thus identified, it is a straightforward to determine the weight from the hidden neuron to the output summing neuron using the LMS procedure. So, as we are going to give the training for that and we are going to give the training, for that we are going to give a training that given data is yes, training set comprises the vectors which is going to be an x as a subset of this regularization theorem and desired output value is going to be taken over there. We have to initialize, we have to choose the cluster value q and we have to randomize the value of the centers mu value and we have to set the learning rate. The learning rate is going to be taken greater than 0 or less than 1 which is going to be taken into consideration. Then we are going to have the iterate. So, we have to repeat the procedure and we have to pick a data point and we have to find the index j of the closest center so that the j is equal to average of minimum the value which is going to get present over there and after that we have to update only the choose chosen closest centers. We have to update only the chosen closest centers so that what happen it is going to be get getting the function into an expected one. Until there is no uh, perspectable change in the centers it has to be get repeated like that. Such a way we are going to have the k means clustering. Let me move on to the next one which is going to be called as supervised learning of centers, supervised learning of centers. In this form of learning the radial bias function network is most general with all the parameters being free and subject to a standard supervised learning procedure uh, such as a gradient descent, gradient descent requires the definition of the error on the training data. With all the notations as what already we have been defined, this error can take the form in such a way that this is going to be taken into epsilon is equal to 1 over 2 summation of k is equal to 1 to 2 and the function which is going to be get taken into this consideration as e to the power of e sub x k square, e sub x k square such a way it is going to be taken over there. So, all the parameters being free and subject to a standard supervised learning procedure such as the gradient descent. So, the gradient descent function which consisting of an error function is going to be defined like this and a free parameters which consisting of a centers, spreads, covariance, matrix, weights are going to be get considered over this which is going to provide a supervised learning of the centers. Let me move on to a partial derivatives of this expression. So, the update equation are presented here even uh, without uh, derivations. Uh, since we are familiar with the procedure for driving update equation based in the gradient descent. For a detailed review, the individual gradient with the help or with respect to the weights, centers and spreads are going to be defined like this. Okay? So, it is going to be dou epsilon k by dou weight i k is equal to this expression. So, this expression defines the partial derivatives of this particular function. So, how we can update this equation? From which we can update this equation as like this. So, the expression can be defined like this here where the k i to the power of minus 1 by k denotes the spread matrix at iteration k and g dash the g dash value is going to be a derivative of this g. So, that each of the update equation has its differential learning rate such a way it is going to get present over there. 
with the help we are going to proceed with the operational summary of radial basis function network. So, designing uh, by assuming a random uh, placements of centers and fixed spreads, at this point we must close with an operational summary concern the designing of this radial basic function networks. So, this summary has been written for the case of random placements of centers. It is left as an exercise to the readers. We, if you want, you can go for this and you can formulate such summaries for other cases of learning also, which are straightforward extensions has been mentioned in this particular uh, diagram, particular table. So, if you are going to see about that, given a training set data, we have to set the training set data and we have to initialize choosing the number of basic functions and we have to set the regularization parameters lambda value and we have to design the radial bias function network. So, we need to set the value of centers mu value to the random points using a uniform distribution and we have to compute the maximum distance between the chosen centers alpha value and we need to set the spread sigma is equal to sigma by sorry, alpha by uh, root 2 into q and we need to compute q and q dash and we have to compute the uh, pseudo inverse value g transpose g plus lambda g inverse to the, to the inverse of g transpose using the SVD. And finally, the optimal set of the weights are going to be taken into the consideration that w is equal to the g uh, pseudo inverse value in d such a way it is going to be taken care. So, this is going to be the operational summary of k means clustering algorithm for this radial basic function network. So, let me see about the next topic radial bias function network applications to phase recognition applications to phase recognition. First one automatic human phase recognition next phase recognition third bioinformatics problems we are going to consider about this three in this particular slide. So, automatic human phase recognition uh, from both still images and video or a moving motion image is an important area of research and how is going to be now uh, routinely used in both static mission applications. For example, in passport or credit cards or driving license etcetera and, and as well as in the real time applications such as in the surveillance video. So, both are going to be differ. So, in the passport, credit card, driving license etcetera, if you are going to see about it is going to be a still image is going to get present over there. Whereas, such surveillance videos a movement is going to be present over there that video is going to be considered into the particular thing. So, such a way the automatic human face recognition is going to be considered. So, it can be an images or it can be an moving picture it is a video such a way it is going to get present as automatic human face recognition. The next one is going to be second one face recognition. The face recognition represents a difficult research problem because face images are highly variable changing with lightning and background conditions and also with the expressions facial hair makeups and other dynamic factors. Also in the case of the bioinformatics this uh, problems face recognition problem have a characteristics of highly uh, dimensionally with a small uh, sample set size. So, this can lead to challenges in the tackling the overfitted and the over trained problem such a way we are going to have this problem over there. As I said with expressions facial hair makeups and other dynamic factors are going to be involved in the face recognition. And bioinformatic photo uh, problems the high definitionality is going to be with a small sample of sets is going to be a problem. So, as an important factor in the face recognition it is identification of the features to be used to represent a face in varying environments and the subsequent use of those features to clarify or to classify a new facial data. So, several face recognition approaches have been published in many of the literatures which use a geometrical features as well as a global representations of the particular different faces are going to get present over there. 
so that we are going to continue this particular descriptions or uh, details of an applications of radial basic function network to recognize the phase recognitions in the further slides. Let me see about the first one is going to be an image classification application. Let me see about image classification application. So, an high dimensional feature leads or high dimensional uh, space leads to poor generalization performance of an image classification algorithm. That is going to be a major problem we are going to face over there. And indexing and retrieval of image collections in the world wide web is going to be a major challenge. It is going to be a major challenge. And uh, support vector machines provide such promises in such applications. And we now describe the applications of the support vector machines to the procedure or the problems of the image classification. The first solution for this is going to be extraction of features, extraction of features. Since the dimension of this input is very high, it is essential to perform the uh, feature set reduction. It has to be get perform the feature set reduction. This is going to be done in two steps. Okay. First is going to be a principal component analysis. First is going to be principal component analysis and next we are going to take about the particular value which is going to be called determination of structure and initialization of the RBFs. So, first we are going to deal about the principal component analysis. A phase image F is assumed to be a two dimensional n cross n array of intensity values where f is set off uh, the particular function. So, that we can give the q images in the training set. So, that f is equal to f 1 comma f 2 comma etcetera up to f q which can belonging to a class C. So, to perform a principal component analysis we first define the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix k is equal to 1 over q summation of i is equal to 1 to q with f i minus f dash and f i minus f dash transpose. So, this EGN phase feature vector x i are calculated by projecting the facial intensity vectors onto the EGN phase, uh, EGN phase space. So, that we are going to take that x i is equal to p transpose f i. This is going to be the principal component analysis of this first step. Second one, Fisher's linear discriminant. Fisher's linear discriminant. So, while this PCA performs a dimensionality reduction, it does not provide an information on the interclass discriminations. So, this discriminations, uh, the Fisher's linear discriminant is an approach that does not provide the information. So, accordingly this Fisher's linear discriminant is applied to the EGN phase feature vectors x i in the following way. Between the classes and within the classes scatter matrix are going to be get calculated respectively as we are going to see about this one which is going to be the scattered matrix which is going to be called as a between class. So, between class S b is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 to c is going to be divine given a value over there and within the classes the S w is going to be dealt as this parameter and from this we are going to finally, the feature vector of the image within the optimal discriminants are going to be calculated as z i is equal to e naught of transverse x i that is going to be get present over here. So, with these are the two steps which is going to be involved to provide a solution for the extraction of the feature features. Let me move on to the next one hybrid learning algorithm, hybrid learning algorithm. Before entering into this hybrid learning algorithm, we must analyze about determination of structure and initialization of the RBF. So, let me see about this particular value in this slide. So, the number of inputs uh, to the network which is going to be equal to the top the number of features and the number of outputs is going to be equal to the top number of classes. So, the number of RBF units is going to be appropriately incremented 
through an iterative procedure, uh, which repeatedly goes through all training samples, checking uh, for the interclass contaminants and overlaps. So, centers of this RBF units are initialized through this procedure of the iterating splitting using the means of the data vector that are associated with the corresponding RBF units. For that initialization of this units with the widths overlaps to the nearest RBFs are going to be get minimized while trying to main maintain this generalized ability of this network. So, for a uh, majority uh, for a major uh, Criterion ensures that each data point associated with a unit measure more than 50 percent confidence level and an overlapping uh, criterion control the overlap between the different foot points of this particular RBF units. So, that we are going to continue that with the help of this hybrid learning algorithm. So, hybrid learning algorithm this model uses two pass uh, hybrid learning procedure outlined as in this particular slide. So, the weights forms the hidden RBF units to the output are adjust using a linear process linear least squares which is going to consisting of a parameters of the RBF units are going to be adjusted using a non-linear process gradient functions of this particular descent. So, these are briefly explained as weight adjustments. So, the weight adjustments are going to be taken in a given input z i the weights and the q hidden rbf neurons the signal form output neuron j is going to be defined as a standard rbfs so y j to the power of k is equal to summation of h is equal to 1 to q where which consisting of this values over here inu ide सर सर ओके स्वल्प बेग हूँ so, the inverse vector when we are going to see about the optimal weight matrix going to be obtained by keeping this RBF. So, that we are going to take the weight matrix can be rewritten into this terminology as W star is equal to T of R transverse R inverse of R transverse such a way it is going to get present over there. Let me see about the hybrid learning parameter with the gradient descents for this parameter adjustments. So, which have been tabulated over here in this. So, we are going to see about that the parameter of this RBN neurons are adjusted through gradient descent. The error function employed is going to be standard square error function and descent functions are going to be derived by taking the partial derivatives of the error with the respect or uh, which is going to be the centers and the spread of the RBFs. So, the training procedure which is going to operate as follows over here the weights RBFs and signals have been represented with the pass forward as well as backward pass are going to be given over there forward pass and backward pass have been given over there. So, move on to the next one the overall database. So, the author when we are going to have tested this algorithm of the database of facial images formerly known as the ORL at the Cambridge University the face recognition image database they have the author has taken this and yes described about this one. So, this database compromises of 400 images of 40 individual as shown in this figure. So, which is going to provide a uh, EGN value or error rate average error rate is going to be present as like that E average is equal to summation of I is equal to 1 to Q with number and which is going to be noted over there. So, this approach is going to be considered in this particular a rate error rates have been mentioned over there in this the conventional network which is consisting of 3 simulations 4, 10, 6 and the average error rates have been mentioned like this. So, this different images which is going to be providing a weight regularity for us. So, this weight regularities are going to be get present over there. So, this compromises the hybrid conventional network neural network CNN 
which is going to be a nearing, uh, nearest feature line and the multi resolution principle component analysis. So, which is going to be the best value of E average for the CNN which has been based on the three runs of experiments with a self organizing maps. Let me see about the weight regularities which is going to get present over there. So, other models are valid generalization for this uh, particular uh, difference. So, the regular, regularized basic idea adds a sum of weight squares which turns over all weights in the network which is presently being optimized which is going to be called as a sigma value as present in the regularized parameter. So, a weight dk regularized needs to treat both input hidden and the input output hidden weights differently in order to work well with this omega value. And coming to the MATLAB simulation, so when we are going to simulate this MATLAB simulation, we are going to get the value as like that one. So, considering the two class data distribution which is going to be portrayed in the figure, the figure also plots the Bayesian decision boundary. We wish to train a single simodial logistic neuron to solve the classification problems, which is using a different value of the regularization control. So, which specifies the particular MATLAB simulations when alpha is equal to 0, 0, 0.01, these are the different parameters which is going to get present over here. So, the left panel shows the signal functions and the middle panel shows the respective counters and the last panel shows the weight space targeters. So, row wise simulations are going to be dissipated for the alpha value 0.1.1. 0.001. And if you are going to see about the simulations for alpha is equal to 0.1, 1, these are the things have been there. It is going to provide the signal function and the center point counters are going to be there and the third one, last one, weight space are going to be get mentioned over here. And with the commitments or committees of this networks, a network committee is going to be set of different neural network architecture that works together to generate a estimate of the underlying function f of x. So, each network is going to be assumed to have been trained on the same data which is going to be a distribution along not necessarily the same data set that is going to be most important thing. So, an averaging output or out of this noise components which reduces the overall noise in the prediction as well performing can actually improve to a minimal computational cost when using a committee of networks. Such a way we are going to use this committee of network. With the help of that we are going to get averaging reduces the error. So, the analysis shows that the error can only reduce on averaging of this data. So, that we are going to get this expression to be get minimized as like this. Okay. So, next if you are going to see about the architecture of the committee of network. The architecture uh, is going to be, in fact, this allows us to concentrate on reduction of the bias only during the training of individual network, since the variance would eventually get averaged out over the committee. So, the figure which is going to portrait about the architecture with a simple committee network architecture. So, further reductions also may be possible over there. Coming to the last topic of this model number 3, mixture of experts. If the problem of learning a map can be decomposed into the problem of learning mapping over a different ranges of the space patterns. So, we can consider having a different network each trained over this regions. So, the output of this individual networks can then be employed to generate an output for the entire pattern space by approximating selecting the connect, uh, correct networks output. So, the later uh, the task can be done by separating gating networks and the entire collection of individual networks together with a gating network which is going to be called as a mixture of expert model, mixture of expert model. Oh, Jacob has demonstrated, the scientist Jacob has demonstrated the performance of this module on a verbal recognition pattern to show that it is able to discover an appropriate decompositions of the input output mapping. Such model has also been extended to a deep uh, to develop a deep architecture or hierarchical mixture of expert model. So, this is going to be the mixture of expert model. So, with this I am going to wind up the model number 3 of artificial neural network. I hope that you have got benefited by watching this video. Thank you. Thank you one and all.